So number seven then from paper two of the 2019 National Five. Three marks here for, again, another non-right angle triangle. So it's a scalene triangle, one of the formulas at the front. This time you're given all three sides and it says calculate the size of the smallest angle in this triangle XYZ. Well, you can identify the smallest angle because it will subtend, it'll be opposite to the smallest side. So this is the one you want. So without any angles inside it, that'll be the cosine rule you're using. You can check at the front there. You've got the various formulae. You want this one, the cosine rule. You want the one where it's rearranged. Now this has got cos A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. And there's no A's and B's and C's. Now you could reconfigure that to make them into A's, B's and C's. Or you could change those. But I think I'm just going to put that in inverted commas because it's just a pattern. You can see the odd one out here. Whichever angle you're looking for, that's the odd side. So since it's angle Z, I'm going to write cos Z from a formula, and I know the other two will be those ones. So it must be 7.2 squared plus 8.5 squared, but minus the one opposite the angle, 6.3 squared. It's not really clear that. Over two times the same again, 7.2 times 8.5. The odd one out of the numbers in the calculations are the ones opposite the angle. Now, having done that, all that remains for you to do is pop that into your calculator. And when you put that into your calculator and press equals, it very nicely comes up with a little fraction for you. So you know it's completely accurate. You could have gone in with the angle Z is going to be inverse cos, but I'm going to put it down now properly. So the smallest angle is the one at Z, which should be enough. I'm going to say angle Y, Z, X, just in case. It's going to be the inverse cos of 211 over 306. So just putting that in, just using the answer function, gives me 46.406 and so on. It doesn't mention an accuracy, so I'll go for one decimal place. So that's 46.4 degrees. So there it is. Don't know if to start with, I should have put down at the beginning. Smallest angle, oh, that's implied by this, equals angle, I could say Z, but I'll just go for YZX. But that should be implied by that calculation by mentioning Z. Number eight then, volumes question, composite volumes questions. There's two parts joined together, at least they're joined and not subtracted, that makes a much difference. A traffic bollard is in the shape of a cylinder with a hemispherical top. Now it gives you the sizes. The diameter of the, just says diameter, but that's obviously of the base because it's shown there, is 24 centimetres, but the overall height is 70 centimetres. Okay, I'm not quite drawing that to scale, just because of the size business but it's still perfectly formed from a cylinder and a hemisphere. Calculate the volume, giving your answer to three significant figures. Well, there's two parts to it. There's the volume of the cylinder, and you can look up the front, pi r squared h, and there's the volume of the hemisphere. Now, at the front, it'll give you the volume of a sphere. So you could do that and then half it, or you could just go straight in by saying it's half of a sphere. It's a half of four upon three, pi r cubed. We better sort out all these sizes from what we've got here. That's a diameter then. So the radius of the base is going to be 24 divided by 2, which is 12 centimetres. Now what's the actual height of the cylinder going to be? Well, for the hemisphere on top, its radius is also going to be 12, which means the radius is the distance to any point. That means overall the height, being careful just to put it here, the height of that hemisphere is going to be 12, meaning the height of the cylinder will be 70 minus that radius, minus that 12, which is 58 centimetres. So presumably there's some marks for one or other or both of those. Right, just put them together. Now, one of the pests about this kind of question is you can, you know, you're going to add those answers. You could add them together, keeping pi exact, 
instead of having to go for decimals part way through, I'm going to keep the pi in it. Radius, that's 12 for them both, so it's times 12 squared, but the height of the cylinder is only 58. Hemisphere, a half of 4 upon 3. By doing that, I can just now put 2 upon 3 times pi times 12 cubed. And I'll put both of those into the calculator. So the calculator will give me the answer with pi still in it, which is actually quite handy. And the other one, same again, 1152 pi. Now I'm going to leave a space and put the other answers in. But that means the total volume will be the sum of the two of them. It's going to be this sum plus this sum. 8352 pi plus 1152 pi, which would be 9504 pi. And then I'll change it, change that into... 29857.696 and so on, being the exact answer. It said it wanted it to three significant figures. One, two, three. That'll be two nine with a five seven after the eight. That'll have to go to another nine. And to keep that two in the correct column, these two numbers will have to become zeros. Don't put in a decimal point. Well, you could put one of those going to put anything after it. But don't put a decimal point and then three zeros or whatever. It's just this part here. Now, that should do centimetres cubed. However, I'll just put down what those would be anyway. That was 26238.581 centimetres cubed. And that was... 3619.114 centimetres cubed, if you care to put them down. But you shouldn't round those answers off to three significant figures. You should keep them accurate and wait till the final line before you round it off. And of course, if you'd gone as far as the decimals, that line would have been replaced just by the sum of those two numbers.